I don't want anybody to think that I'm a pedophile or something, okay? Ooh, late. Blah, 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 something. For me, uh, hold on, where's my phone? They have arcades, Roberto. Arcades! Your love. Do it good. In the magazine, or in the manga, or fucking anime, goddammit. Hachikuji! I like Hachikuji. They're very conservation of energy. 20% coffee. Oh my god. So hey everybody, uh, welcome to the Pseudorandom Podcast. Uh, I'm your host CJ, here with me is the usual people, we've got Dan. I like Starbucks, what up? Starbucks is terrible, shut up Dan. <laughs> we also have Roberto. Yo. And Clucker. Dan, Starbucks is terrible, how's it going guys? Alright. I love how Roberto completely excluded himself from the conversation by just saying, yo. <laughs> well, he doesn't, he doesn't need to say anything. anything. He already knows what good coffee is. Like, he oh, yeah. become, he's like, Colombian. Yeah. He's 20% from coffee. the land of coffee. <laughs> yeah, that's right. 20% coffee. Uh, nice. Anyway, so, yeah, you're here for the podcast thing. So, what the podcast is here, it's a anime and manga podcast Um that kind of works like a book club. We recommend stuff to each other. We watch it or read it. Then we talk about it in segments. And along with that comes that there's going to be heavy spoilers for whatever the topic is of the day. and Or whatever the anime or manga is of the day, rather. And um, Which today is going to be Bakuman episodes 1 through 12 for the, the anime. Yeah, so we're going to heavily spoil that. So if, if you're interested in watching that and didn't want spoilers, just at least wait until you've watched it before you listen to this. So yeah, going over the agenda for the day, we have, um, we're going to be talking about Bakuman 1 through 12, then after that we're going to be talking about the anime or manga we've been watching or reading throughout the week, and then we're going to move on to our random topic of the day, which today is, um, what anime world would you, like, like to live in? Like, what what's one that if you could just be like, man, if I could just be there, life would be amazing. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, so, um... All right, so Dan, go ahead and uh, give us a quick description of what Bakuman is. All right, so Bakuman is a series that is based on a manga series of the same name that was published on Weekly Shonen Jump. And just the reason why I wanted to bring that up is because Bakuman is essentially a manga about making manga, and they do make a lot of fun on the same magazine that they were published on. They changed the name a little bit, but essentially the the same thing. And it's made by the same guys who made that note. It tells the story of two middle school guys. Their names are Mashiro and Takagi. One of them is really good at drawing Mashiro, and the other one is great at uh, writing stories. And they get together in order to achieve their dreams of becoming manga artists. During the, their adventures, they have to deal with like their usual school life and everything, while still like having to work hard a lot to reach their dreams. And I, I really like this series. It's one of my... like One of my all-time favorite series, I think, just because it's very different. It is essentially about... like just hard work and, and trying to achieve your dreams no matter what. That's pretty much it for like a usual description of the of the series. We watched the first twelve episodes, which essentially ended when the two kids had just finished graduating from middle school and they were submitting one of their works to for Shonen Jack next, I believe. Yeah. Awesome. So um yeah, I guess we'll get on with the discussion here. I We'll just go ahead and say that I actually really enjoyed this show so far to the point where I unfortunately may end up screwing things up for for Roberto and Klecker here because I actually went ahead and finished all the way through episode 25 already, so... And are you I, tempted to start the second season, by the way? I'm probably this going to tomorrow. This guy over here. Yeah. <laughs> Working I'm ahead. I'm sorry. sorry. Sorry, I have the initiative to work ahead and work hard, Honestly. Klecker. I, I, Sorry, I, already I have other things to do, CJ. <laughs> I already kind of respect CJ for the fact that he finished, like, he, okay, he finished the whole first season, but he has managed to control himself not to start the second one. Because I was super excited to, like, go into the first episode of the second season once I finished the first one as well. Well, the second season has a, or the, the first season has a really good end point, so it's, it's a lot easier not to go ahead. I'm going to wait. I... I may end up watching more tomorrow, but I really want to wait until we at least discuss the second half next week and stuff first, though. Sure, that's fine. It's it's going to be very tough, though, but luckily, Log Horizon looks like it's picked up enough where I'll just watch that and kind of kind of keep myself from re- doing too much more Bakamon from then. <laughs> Log Horizon? 
Anyways, back on topic. Yeah. So so that was where where we stopped at though, Dan. It was right when they they graduated and they just submitted for um Shonen Jump next. But did they get the results back yet? I don't think no. so. I remember they submitted Money and Intelligence, which is the story about oh, uh, yeah. buying each other's brains with with money or something. The see one of the awesome things about the series, in my opinion, is that aside from thinking about the whole story of Bakuman itself, the author also like had to think about all the different stories that they were making throughout the show, and not only them. You know, at this point, it has been mostly them, but also Nizuma Eiji which is a character that you guys already seen and you're probably going to want to talk a little more about. But a lot of other manga authors that you get to meet throughout the thir- three seasons of the series. Oh, God, it's going to be so hard to, like, not talk about Eiji so much. <laughs> well, at this point, I assume they have just met uh, Nizuma Eiji. He's come to Tokyo and he started working on Kral, but that's about it, I think. I think that's when he's submitting for the the same thing they did, and or something like that. Yeah, he was okay. releasing a one shot in color. Okay. That was the yeah. last thing we we heard. Yeah. So we could start from the beginning and just go through like their like the way Mashiro and Takagi meet each other, and the way they go to Azuki House in the first episode, and I'd like to hear like your reactions to that. That was great. I really enjoyed oh. that. The end of that first episode, I was just like, "All right, I'm." I can see myself getting into this series. This is so. actually one of the one of the ones that would have actually been good for last week. I think it was last week or week before. One of those where we talked about one that hooked you by one episode. It like, was last week. Yeah. I don't care. Whatever. Yeah, we'll but it would have been great later, for that anyway. But um, because like that was this is definitely one of the ones where it's just like they set up everything. They gave it a good plot and they just had everything to just really set everything up where it's just like, I need to know what happens now. Right. <laughs> like, they did a great job with that. So for possibly listeners that don't know, although you probably shouldn't be listening to this if you don't know, but just in case, because we, we haven't explicitly said what happens, is that Mashiro asks Azuki, who is the girl he's in love with, in marriage, although they've never talked before, and they make kind of like a plan that when both of their dreams become reality, that's when they'll get married. And her dream is to become a voice actress, and his dream is to become a manga author. So when he makes a manga that becomes an anime that gets her voice in it, that's when they'll meet again and get married. Yeah. Just kind of a, an interesting relationship between those two. Well, it's it's very interesting, the fact that they've never talked before, and they're just, she's just like, okay, I'll marry you if all these things happen. He's just like... Right. <laughs> like, I... It's It's weird. That that's not how the world works typically. <laughs> like yep. I, I don't know anyone who would really agree to something like that after you've never even said anything to that person before. Yeah, quite a weird scene, but it happened. And I mean, she's kind of a weird girl as well. So I mean, not weird, but just like very shy, and she was probably secretly liking him as well. And she was. She, she oh yeah, but it. both of them have they been like that. yeah, both of them have pretty much been oh, in okay. love for a long time. They just. They've never talked to each other. They're both way too shy to even, like, even look at each other most of the time. <laughs> they look at each other like, oh, God, and they turn away and everything. <laughs> it's it's terrible. It, it it makes me cringe sometimes, the, how, how they end up interacting. It's it's bad. Right. If you do wish to, to see, like, a, a better developing, more normal relationship, though, you can follow Takagi's relationships. Yes. So good. How far did that progress in the in the first half? I forgot. They were dating, and that's about it. I think so it's they, nice to point out that two girls wanted to date him. They both go to his yeah. house. <laughs> both of them thought he was dated. They were dating him already. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they both went to his house because he got fucking. I think it was suspended because he punched somebody in the face. Yeah, he beat up and, that kid. Yeah, he beat up somebody at school. Got suspended. Both of his quote unquote girlfriends came to the house. Found out that like they both thought each other, or they they both thought they were his girlfriend from each other. And that he was like, what the fuck is happening? I, yeah. <laughs> I'm i not dating either of you. Yeah, and, like I just held your uh, hand and I just talked to you one time or something. <laughs> yeah, it's there just a bunch of misunderstandings there. And then one of them does not give up, even though he tells her pretty much that... I think it's 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 kind of like that he likes her a little bit in certain ways, but like not like that or something. I don't remember what he said, but he pretty much said, I'm not dating you, and I didn't ask you out, and then she beats the hell out of him, and he's like, okay, now we're dating. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> actually, like, everything about that scene is so amazing. And I did go back to rewatch this, but I didn't rewatch everything. I was just kind of going through the episodes, being like, okay, nothing happens here. I'm going to skip it, or I'm going to watch this one. I didn't have time to rewatch the whole thing, but... Uh, and I rewatched that scene whole, and that scene is so cool because, like, Mashiro is going to his house just to see, like, what he's doing or if he's working on the next story or whatever. And he's also he going opens... to see if he's upset and everything, too. He wants to make oh, sure yeah, he's okay. Oh, yeah, because he did get suspended and everything. That's right. That's actually the main reason. And he sees both, like, like two extra shoe pairs in the door or something like that. And it's like, oh, something's happening here. And he gets <laughs> in there, and both girls are, like, randomly sitting, like, in his, in, like, in his, in his bedroom from, floor and everything. And, just the, the over to top nature of their reactions and, and just their expressions on that scene is so cool because they literally like don't know what to do. Until it's great he, though because like he, he literally just brought the guy who's like, oh, perfect timing, brought him inside yep. and everything, put him there. <laughs> just he was like, I don't know what to do right now. Both of them think I'm dating them. He's like, yep. what? Why the fuck did you bring me inside then? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so right. good. And, and essentially, like, the biggest defining point in there for him to date uh, Miyoshikaya and not the other girls that he goes over the fact that, like, he is drawing manga with Mashiro and that's his dream and he would do his best to achieve that dream, which means he probably won't have as much time to spend with the girls as they would expect. He, and he, he says that straight up. And one of the girls is like, okay, you're ruining your life, who's the other, like, nerd at school or whatever. And she leaves. And the other girl, as CJ said, punches him in the face and is like, we're dating now. <laughs> yeah. She, she said she'll supportive. support him and everything yeah. with uh, with the manga and all that, which was cool. And he's it it takes a long. Or actually, they did they just start dating, or have they actually done more than that so far? She actually started like hanging out with him more. A little bit. I think yeah, I think they just started, just very little. Okay. Like I feel like two, she's going to become their assistant. Two or three episodes ago, I think it was. Okay. Yeah, she starts so going to their really... place a lot and like just talking to them a little bit about the. Yeah what they're doing. And yeah, she she's she's actually a really good fit for him too. It actually it, it's pretty awesome. I'm not going to yep. say any more about that though cuz I want you guys to experience it all. Right. It's, oh god, it's it's great. <laughs> I mean, I really like that character because although like she doesn't really understand anything of their business, she's still always like there being supportive of them for the most part, you know. She she wants them I can clearly see that she wants them to achieve their dream and she's very understandable about the fact that they're going after that. When even when that means that they won't be able to hang out as much. Oh yeah, that that does make her sad sometimes. But I mean, that's to be expected if someone straight up tells you when you start dating, "Hey, you're you're gonna be on the back burner. I'm doing this. So if you can handle that, then cool, we're good." So at least you made that very apparent at the beginning. <laughs> right. So what 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 did you uh you think about that clicker? I didn't really hear much from you about this. I really like the girl. Um, she seems super interesting. Um, I do, I, like you said, she's really a perfect fit for Takagi, because Takagi always tries, really, he tries a lot of very, like, shady shit sometimes. Like, going, in the very, like, second episode, just going to someone's house to propose to them. Just, yep. I'm yeah. just gonna go do this, and she kind of will... Oh. Yes, that's actually something we should mention, though, because that's how that's how Takagi actually gets uh, Mashiro over to the girl's house and everything, because he tells her he's going to go propose to her, and, ta- and Mash- Mashiro's like, what the hell? And he ends up like <laughs> going over there. Then his quote-unquote proposal thing was to just tell her that he's going to become a manga artist, and that's it. So yep. he was like, wait, what the fuck? And then he literally ends up actually proposing to her, which is hilarious. Like, yes, that was that just that episode. I was like, "All right, I'm really interested in this now because it it has an interesting aspect to it because usually if you have a it's not just enough to have a goal in mind. It's also if you have something that pushes you forward, aka I'm going to marry this beautiful woman if I complete my goal, then that will right. help you through even the tougher times, which I'm interested to see exactly how tough it gets for them yeah. and it should be really good right yeah. in the beginning you probably already saw some of the tough times well first i think it's worth pointing out that the the anime actually opens up with a scene from a cartoon that or sorry not a cartoon it looks like a cartoon but essentially on, an Dan. anime series it's a what anime it's a terribly drawn anime yeah <laughs> 
that is based on Mashiro's uncle manga, and Mashiro's uncle who died of uh, overworking, as they say, for the most part, he was a manga author that kind of, he kind of never made it with the exception of that one series that he was able to achieve success with. Yeah. And I think there's an interesting parallel about like his uncle's story and their story, because he was also uh, sending letters and proposing to Azuki's mother, if I remember, yeah, Azuki's yeah. mother. Yeah, which and, is, well, I don't think we've actually said her name. That's actually the girl that uh, Mashiro proposes to. Yeah. So it's yes. actually kind of funny where he ends up doing the same thing that his uncle did, where it's like, when, we're, when I'm successful, then we're going to fucking date and get married and all that. Well, his uncle never really, like, when I'm successful, I'm going to marry you. It was, I need to prove myself to this woman. And that's how it differs. That's how the main character differs from is different from his uncle right. because if he actually successfully do, does it, he marries this woman. His uncle just said, I want to prove myself to this woman to try and win her over. But there's that promise that I feel like will help help him out. Even with the promise, though, he's still kind of going through the same risk of, you know, maybe she would get married. Like, maybe she would say fuck it and get married to another guy. And mm -hmm. What she did. What we do then. Uh, and yeah, that's what, like, Azuki's mother did. And what what I think is particularly interesting about the uncle is that he's kind of the example of, like, what could happen to them, you know? Like, he is, you know, what, what if it doesn't work out as good as they expect, you know? Like, they always have that shadow of, yeah, he kind of made it, but he overworked, and eventually he got canceled, and he died, and all that. And Well, that, and he made it too late as well. Yeah. Because yeah, by the time he, like, he, when, he, when he finally got serialized... I think it was two or three years after she had already gotten married. or No, when he got his, the anime made, it was like two or three years after um, she had already gotten married to another guy. So he finally made it to that point where he would have been quote-unquote good enough, even in his eyes, for her. She had already been married for a couple years at that point. So he was kind of just... It, it, was, it was just too late, really. Right. And they do get their his studio right right in the beginning mm -hmm. when they start oh, working. Yeah. They go to to his uncle's studio, and when they get in there, like action figures and manga everywhere, right? Yeah, I d I do like the dynamic with the family and everything though. Know, with that, where he he decided to do it finally after he like proposed to the girl and all that, and then um, then he went and he's like, okay, I need to talk to my parents about this. And he's like, Mom, I need to talk to you. And started talking to her. Like, as soon as he said he wanted to be Mongar, she was like, No, no, not right. going to happen. He was like, At least ask dad. And then his dad got home later and all that. And he was just like, um, It didn't take like even a minute or whatever for him to be like, to tell her that men have their dreams and to let him do it. And then, then uh, his mom came up and he's like, Well, you have to tell your granddad now because he already lost one son to this. So. Like, he told his granddad, and he's like, oh, manga artist, oh, here's the keys, here you go, yeah. <laughs> go, go, to the, go to the studio, that's yours now. And his mom's still in shock, pretty much, because both of them were just like, here you go, go do it. Right. I love the fact that his family seems, conser like, very conservational for the most part, I mean, conserv conservative for the most part, but, like, uh, They're very his... conservation of energy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but they still, like, with the exception of his mom... That had like her reasons, and that makes sense. But they still support him for the most part, you know. Especially his father letting him do it, and his grandpa giving the keys. Well, and you can see them actually being very proud of him, both because he finally like wants to follow the stream. Because this is something even uh, mostly just because of his uncle that he always wanted to do when he was a kid. Right. And now he's actually pursuing that, and they're they want to be supportive of that, and they're also proud that, of how hard he's working. He's actually actually submitting stuff to like major companies and all that and they're they're really proud of that and it shows a lot more later on and everything too which right. is pretty awesome which was something good to point out by the way because as soon as like okay so they get in their they get in the studio they you know they uh takagi starts reading a lot of manga and getting ideas and, and writing a lot of scripts and i think they call them names which are like just the first very first early draft of the story uh with with a few like uh, drawings and stuff, and they work on their first product that they could, their first manuscript that they could go and send to an actual uh, editorial company, and they, uh, I think it's called Two Earths or something like that. Yeah, which was actually like a pretty awesome story in my opinion. Uh, but and that's why I brought up before that part of the reason why I like this so much is that aside from their story, there's also like all those like little stories that they build throughout the series, but. 
they do oh, take yeah. that to the editor, which was Hattori, right? I, I, don't, I don't remember his full name now, but something Hattori. Uh, why do you guys think of him? Oh, he was great. I, I definitely like him. But I guess I have a little bit different opinion because I've seen a lot more of him later on and like what he's trying to do with him and all that. But one thing that's awesome, even the first time they come and talk to him, be like, because there, there's the the AG guy that um that was mentioned earlier, where he's pretty much someone. I think he's 14 and he's just like a quote unquote genius because he's already like fucking submitting stuff and like yeah. everybody loves everything he puts out. He's been in, he's won awards, he's been in, put into Shonen ja- Jump and all that, and like. The, the editor dude, like, goes and talks to someone else, be like, hey, I think these guys are going to surpass him in three years, and it's just like, holy shit. Like, that's yep. that's one hell of a thing to say. What, what yeah, did, I... um, what did, uh, you and, uh, yeah, Roberto and Clicker think about him, though? I thought a little bit, maybe he wasn't so trustworthy, kind of like Mashiro did. Because, you know, uh... it's easy to be polite and be like, oh, yeah, this is good, I'll I'll show it to people, you know. But he has come through for them, and he's really helping them out. And that was evident when they did their second story, and, and he was like, pretty much he hadn't slept, looked like he hadn't slept in a week, reading all their different drafts and stuff, and trying to pick out the best one, and giving them feedback constantly. Well, he's giving them good feedback. Too. Yeah, he's he is. like He's making sure that I was like, hey, this, you need, if you fix this, it'll be fucking good, and you guys will do well. And he's, he's not being easy on him, but he's not being too harsh on him either, which is right. nice. Right, right. What would you think of him, though, Clicker? I thought kind of the same thing that Roberto did. At first, I was like, yeah, this guy's kind of... I don't know how I feel about this guy. And then, exactly like what happened in the second in the second story they wrote, he actually, like, it looked like he stepped up, was reading everything that they came to him about, and was giving good constructive advice about it. So I was I was happy the second I saw him start reading over the second story. Nice. Right. Just a very small thing that I liked about him as well is on the very first episode that he shows up, they show him uh, two earths and he goes through it, like he reads it super quickly and then he's like, yeah, it's all right, you should like get better on like your stories to, I don't remember the exact term that he uses, but he's essentially saying that like uh, Takagi's story is a lot like a novel and not as much like a manga in the sense that it's very wordy and stuff. And he talks about uh, Mashiro's drawing as well that like it's good, but it's a little too realistic, it's not so much in the in the manga side of things and he identifies that they clearly have a very unique and different style and because of that he's not too harsh on them but he does tell them to you know like do something else and and bring it back i'm gonna submit this one keep working here's my card and that kind of stuff but as soon as they leave like the other editor comes up to him and is like so how, how are those kids and it's like i think he says you know like they're not that good at first and then it's like but in three years they're going to surpass Nizuma Eiji. And I think that's cool because it shows that, like, they're not genius, like, superheroes, essentially, who had, like, something amazing in the start. Like, they're good, well, and they he, have he a just lot of potential. The, yeah, a lot of potential. Yeah, but they still have a lot of hard work their way, you know? Mm-hmm. And they submit two ARFs, and that doesn't even make it to the finals. And then they submit something else, which I don't quite remember the details now because it wasn't as, like, memorable, I think. But th- that's the the one that he comes up, like, he hasn't slapped and everything. And that one goes to the finals. So they're, like, very, like, expecting it to win something. And unfortunately, they get that cow and they get to know that they didn't make it. Mm-hmm. And that was the actual, the, the prize that Nizu Maishi got uh, first place and runner-up at the same time. And that's what actually takes the kid at school to criticize Mashiro's drawings in Takagi, then to punch him. Oh yeah, the guy that can just draw like cute girl faces at a yeah. certain angle. <laughs> yeah, it was funny that they weren't just like, "Well, what what magazine have you been published in, huh?" Yeah. <laughs> and fucking Takagi is just like, "Fuck it," punch him in the face. Yep, <laughs> that's what I gets love him that suspended. scene as well. Yeah, because somebody is criticizing. Uh, Marshall's artwork too much, and he just got so pissed. He's like, "You will fucking apologize to him right now!" As he's punching his face, in. <laughs> it's great. That's part of the reason why I like Takagi a lot as well. Because aside from being smart and having that very unique writing style that he does, like the you would probably passion, not... man. Yeah, like he's super passionate about what he does as well. And like he he won't take bullshit, you know, like for for him or his friends. Yeah. I I definitely like him for a lot of stuff like that. He's he's a really good character for for things like that. Like, 
it's it's weird because he feels kind of like almost like a generic character in that aspect, but he does it in such a different way where he's still very unique. Right. Like he has a lot of the typical like aspects like that, but he just pulls it off a different way. Which, oh my god, I just remembered one of the funniest scenes I think I've ever seen in an anime just because of like how it played out and just the timing was perfect. Um, I forgot what exactly happened. I think they were started, ri- started writing some stuff or whatever, but Mashiro ends up not being able to do a midterm because he was too tired and couldn't focus or something. So he ends up going to the nurse's office. And then Takagi's already done, so he's like, hey, I want to go with him, and I'm tired too. And he goes in there and everything. And they start talking about some stuff in there, and then um, Marshiro says something about, I think it's I think it's about the girl, because like his, his heart was fluttering, or something like random cliche like that. And then fucking Takagi just starts laughing right in his face. Like, that was one of the funniest things <laughs> I think I've seen in a long time, just because of the timing of it. Right. Oh, yeah, I, I love their scenes, I love their dynamics as well. And I also really like Nizuma Eiji's character because he is there to show that, like, while those two guys, they're the, kind of more of the, like, they're passionate about what they do, but they're also very, they calculate, like, their chances a lot, and they're always trying to think of, like, what could make it, what could be successful. And there there's an interesting message on the show that, you shouldn't just go with what most like what is successful because maybe that is just not your style, and that's something they figure out hope, like kind of early on. Thankfully, that they can't just go and try to make like whatever is successful at Chun and Jump because that's not what they're good at making. They have to go with their kind of weird, uh, odd, deep stories, making them in a way that's a little more accessible, but working on on their on their talent. And they're they're very how, how can I say like they're. I think they're very clever about what they're doing. While Nizuma Eiji is just the genius that, like, almost like any, it's not, we could almost say that anything he does is going to be successful just because he's organically and naturally able to do it. Yeah. And in that, in that, um, style of the magazine. Like, that's one thing I actually really didn't like his character at first because he just seemed, he seemed like just because he's so good and everything, he seemed almost like a pompous asshole at first to me, and I just legitimately hated that guy. Right. That's kind of how <laughs> I feel right now. Yeah. Like, Especially he, with he what makes, he said. Yeah, it makes a fucking comment. He's like, oh yeah, if I become number one most popular guy, you give me the power to end whatever fucking manga I don't like, or something like that, or any one manga yeah. that I don't like. And it's just like, wow, what a dick. Exactly. I I do like how they eventually address that, by the way. I'm mostly wondering how he's going to be either an impediment or maybe a helpful for the two main characters. Yeah. You're just going to have to wait and see. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm just going to spoil it. Like, he does get a lot more screen time on the second half of the series, so that's why... I, I think so. So that's why even CJ said that he... Like, he's not sure what to say about him right now, because he essentially just showed up, right? But Yeah, like, as, as far as how he is right now, he's just... I, I don't know. It's, it's really weird. weird. Like it has... Go ahead. I was going to say, it was really weird how he was chasing uh, that bird in the park, but it turns out that's part of uh, the method to his madness a bit. Because immediately yep. he starts writing about some bird superhero, and it's yeah. successful. So, I'd be what's... really interested to pick that guy's brain if they mm. ever do that <laughs> yeah. in the well, show. What's your opinion on him, Clucker? I thought he was a huge dick. <laughs> like, I I didn't like how cocky he was. I didn't like anything about him, pretty much. Everything about that character, I was like, I really want them to just, like, show this ass. guy up. <laughs> like, I want them to just be like, you know what? Your work has got nothing on our work. And just, like, win a contest against him. Just, just wait for the second half of this season, though. He... You'll you'll enjoy a lot of the interactions with him. It's actually pretty amazing. All right, uh, so good. The oh. like the author, sorry, I, the the uh, the author editor dynamic on the show is also good because you're gonna, you're gonna get to see a lot of manga authors and they each have a different editor and stuff. And I I, I think it's also nice to see not only how each manga artist works but also how each different editor works as well. Yeah, yeah the same- definitely. In the same way you see, like, you will see more of Nizuma Eiji, you will see more of his editor as well. 
And we'll Go see ahead, all, the, all the competing for the other editors, too. Yeah, that's cool as well. Part of me feels like they're all going to end up teaming up somehow. Just a random prediction I have. It's an interesting prediction. Why do you yeah. think you, they would, like, team up? Well, seeing as they're both pretty good in their own respective right. ways, and if they just kind of form together, they'd just be this even bigger powerhouse. Well, that's right. Well, I'm, I'm not really going to say like exactly what happens, obviously, because I don't want to spoil it for you guys, but at this point of the story, I did not think that at all. I thought they were just going to be... Um, like, my, my predictions were they're just going to be heavily competing against each other to the point where, like... Like, fucking AG ends up actually trying to get to the number one spot to end up uh, canceling whatever their stuff is. So, like, they finally get serialized or something, and then fucking AG cancels their shit, and, like, shit hits the fan. Like, <laughs> that's, at this point, like, that's what I was um, expecting to happen. Well, yeah, that's that's my other side of the coin of my predictions, is that. What do you think's gonna happen, Clacker? I don't know. I was, I was thinking more on the lines they would compete with each other. I could see them kind of teaming up but i would i think they would need some reason to team up like i don't see ag just saying hey i'm gonna team up and we're gonna create like the best manga studio ever like i i can't see that right now so i feel like if it does happen it'd have to be like they have to beat ag outright and once they beat ag outright they then get AG as like as kind of like an underling, kind of like in a series known as Air Gear. Air Gear had a lot of I am this, I am slowly developing and I'm fighting these tough guys, and as I'm fighting these tough guys, I'm earning their respect, and then they're actually coming over to my side. I kind of can see that with AG, but I'm thinking it's just going to be an all-out war between them. For a while, at least, I can't. I can't mm-hmm. see them teaming up yet, but it would be interesting if they did. And if they did, I can see it where it'd be kind of like, I have to beat this guy, and then he will come work with us, and we can do amazing things together. So it'll be interesting to see where it goes. But for right now, I can't see that. Yeah. Yeah, that that actually makes a bit of sense to me. Well, considering I've already seen everything, though, I can't really yep. say too much. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could, though. Cause I, I can't, pretty much watch, CJ. You I, can't I spoil much, stuff for us. I'm not we going spoil... to. Shut up. I'm not going to spoil shit. <laughs> we spoil stuff know. for everyone that watches this. We can't spoil it for ourselves, too. <laughs> well, the idea is that when they watch it, they, they're supposed to have already watched the first 12 episodes as well. Yeah, yeah. but or skip I can straight see to what people they're just watching on. it because they want to watch it. Yeah. Well, it's like I told you at the beginning. If you fucking if if you're you're concerned about spoilers, then you're in the wrong fucking podcast. So, yep. Yeah. But yeah, like I'm not gonna spoil shit for you guys. Don't worry. I just it's it's so interesting knowing what's gonna happen though and hearing your predictions because I I rarely actually get to hear this because even with the last um last one I recommended uh Amigami SS it's like well I mean all the arcs are done now for the first half you can't really predict anything. And right. It's, it's it's weird like that. Like this is actually pretty interesting. I I, I know you guys are going to enjoy it though. Like she gets a lot better in the second half. I enjoyed the second half much better than the first half. Really? Oh yeah. It's it's so good. Cause there's I'm so many to look forward to it. So many good interactions with Kaya, so many good interactions with AG and fucking editors, fucking everything. And right. I'm not going to say anything about it, but there's fucking some rock star dude that has shit going on too. It's oh yeah! Oh crazy. yes, that interactions. Guy. So if it has really good interactions, are the interactions as good as the series known as Bako Monogatari? I think it's very different to even compare something. Yeah, to yeah. That. you can't even but, compare that, dude. Okay. But, well, Bako Monogatari does a really good job of interactions. So I was just wondering if they are they do really good interactions, type, or if they're. Completely different kind, you say? Okay. It's, it's completely different, because with uh, with Baka Monogatari, and just the Monogatari series in general, the thing that makes it so good is the interactions, because it's it's between two people. They'll have a whole fucking episode of them just in a playground talking to each other, two characters, and that's it. They right. just talk the entire time, and it's so good and funny, and the puns and everything like that. That's the type of interactions that make that show so special, but that never happens in this show. There might okay. be a casual joke or pun or something like that, which you see a lot of that happen with, with Kaya and Takagi. That's fucking amazing. Like, their dynamics later are amazing. 
but um it's it's you you can't compare the two they're nothing alike okay i was just, when when interactions come to mind the bakuman nagatari comes to mind because that's the series i can think of that has so amazing interactions like right. the best interactions i've ever seen oh, yeah. so that's what came to mind when you said the interactions are going to be great in the second half Mm -hmm. something you can already kind of look forward based on the things that you have watched so far is that you already saw a lot of growth from most of the characters in this series probably and when i say growth not as much as like personality growth more of like at first they just did one thing and it got kind of got nowhere right and then the, the second work got you the finalist but ultimately didn't make it the top four or whatever and then now you're seeing them work on their uh third work i believe but we haven't that that is supposed to go on uh and I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's jump or Jack because I think they actually call it Jack, as they in do. like kind well, of a joke with the Jump is, magazine. Yeah, but it is essentially the yeah the same. Because um, in, in the manga, it's actually they, I think they just straight refer it to it as uh, as Jump, but for I guess copyright reasons, they couldn't do that in the magazine or in the manga or fucking anime. anime. God damn it. Yeah. There you go. <sighs> yeah, but and the same way that Eiji was just like uh, writing manga for, I mean, drawing manga for contests and stuff and now he's actually going to be serialized and, and shonen jump so you, you can already see that they're on a different level at this point than they were at the beginning and that growth continues to happen obviously with some stones along the way but it's, it's just interesting to see like and, and try to imagine how far they'll get you know each of those characters how good they'll get and that well, kind yeah, of the stuff. the growth actually even gets better where it's not just their growth as far as getting better at what they're doing but there's shit tons of character growth and like everything else too like right that's one thing I love about this because there's so much progression to it. It's it's so good. You guys are gonna enjoy the fuck out of it. I know I have so far. I mean, hell, I I think I marathon most of the rest of the season yesterday. I think I watched like I think ten episodes yesterday, and wow, a few like the day before. Because I accidentally like even without thinking about that, like when we when we first because uh, we've had some scheduling issues and stuff, but um. When we found out about one of the scheduling issues, like, well, we're not recording today. I looked, I was like, I'm already three ahead of where I should be anyway. Fuck it, I'm gonna finish. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. It's it's one of the ones that definitely grabbed me and brought me in, and I'm glad I finished off that season, though. Like, because it, it's, it gets very interesting. There's a lot of stuff they throw at you that you would not have expected at all. Like, just not at all. It's great. Right. Also, in the very last episode of the season, I'm pretty sure there is a scene after the credits that kind of set up sets up what is going to happen on the second season. So yeah, I did I'm, I'm, not have to be yeah. watch that. I I'm like 99 percent sure that happens. Uh, if it doesn't, then it's a different season that I'm thinking about. But I'm 99 percent sure it's this one. So I think you should probably look at that, CJ. And that's I'm actually, actually the reason why I thought. <laughs> I, that's actually the reason why I thought like you were ready uh, on the next one. Like, you were already kind of wanting to start the next one or something. Oh, no, but, it's just what, what they say at the end. Oh, I can't, I can't think of yeah, a way to... Yeah. Or actually, chat. Skype. We can do this with Skype. Okay. So, the that Rockstar guy, that Rockstar guy, he's kind of made cameos, sort of, throughout the first 12 episodes, and there was a scene that I noticed that Takagi kind of looked strangely at the poster of that guy. And I'm wondering what relation he has to that rock star guy. I don't know if he's like his brother or a relative or something. I'll be honest that I don't quite remember everything that happens with that, but I do remember he develops into something. Right, right. I can, I can, I can see him being sort of related to Takagi. It'd be interesting if he was, but I, I, I'd also notice that Roberto the strange look he gave. I don't know if it'd be like a brotherly look. It it was more like kind of like a resentful look, like yeah. I gotta be better than this guy, or I don't I don't want to be this person, sort of thing. Dude, the shit that goes on with him in the second half of the season is so good. Also, I think you have seen the like a little bit of Takagi's backstory as well, right? Where like his yeah. mother says some weird shit to him. Yeah, I don't remember the, the details of that. It was like I think his dad got fired for taking taking the blame for his boss or something. And his mother was always making him study, and she was like, you know, you gotta avenge your father, you gotta be the best you could be, and oh, take yeah, over and that bank. Oh yeah, super pissed. 
Mm-hmm. Like he's just like fuck you, I'm not your tool and everything yeah. for like revenge and all that, and that's why they're they're actually okay with him just doing whatever he wants and pursuing manga if he wants and everything. Well, we haven't really seen them because when Takagi went over or Mashiro went over to his house, they weren't there, and it didn't seem apparent that he lived with other people. Right. I don't think they develop a lot more into that, but it's basically the idea that like he's so passionate about what he does that he like he is able. It's, it, while Mashiro kind of had to wait for like his family to approve and to help him and stuff, Takagi didn't get any of that, but he doesn't give a shit, you know? Like, he's gonna yeah. pursue his dreams no matter what happens. Well, he says at one point his parents just kind of let him do whatever he wants anyway. This is true. So that's yeah, kind of. I, so. I don't remember I the details of that. I think that's when he's talking about that, where his mom made him study all the time, try to avenge his dad and everything. I think that's why he says that. Because at that point, the, his parents stopped really trying to. Like, make him do everything they wanted him to do. Unless I'm wrong, and that happens later on in the season, then I apologize for spoiling that. No, I think that happened in the first 12 episodes. I think I remember something like that. Yeah. Right, well, if cool. it does Either happen, way, it's something that he just yeah, brings up and major. never yeah, never talk about it anymore. So, Either right. way, Takagi is the best character, because he has the best personality. Just in general. He, he is probably my favorite character because of his, his personality as well. He's he's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's right. I've I, I loved him since the first time I saw him and It I've took a few only... episodes for me to like him. I didn't like him at first. No, yeah. I I the 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 way he was just like, Alright, I'm going to force you to join my cause because I know deep down inside you truly want to do this. The fact that he did that is Awesome. Mm-hmm. Right, but at the same time, he, he did seem like a little bit of a douche in the beginning. With everything he did. That he was doing and, like, just trolling. More more of a troll, actually, like, just, just going <laughs> to the house, pretending he's gonna confess to her Pose and everything. But... and all that stuff. He does that a lot. Yeah, oh, yeah, that, that was fucked up. Oh, yeah, he trolls like hell. That's why I like him so much. When I started to see that come out of him a lot, oh, it's so good. Like, like that's why I love the fucking scene where he just laughs in, in Mushroom's face in the middle of the fucking nurse's office. Right. Like, oh, my God. Because he, he's just, like, without hesitation, Mushroom gets done saying something. He just fucking goes off on him. It's so good. Oh, uh, just no, no fucking, he, he doesn't give a shit half the time. That's the thing that's great about his personality. He gives no right. fucks most of the time. That's why he can do all, half the shit he does. I'm just gonna go propose to this girl, random girl I barely <laughs> talk to. What yeah. da 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 da? That whenever he pretty much tells off both of the girls in his in his apartment and everything, which he ends up immediately regretting it with with fucking Kaya because she starts kicking his ass because she used to be like some super high like martial artist or something because she used to compete with stuff like that before. So even though she's out of practice, she still kicks his ass really easy. <laughs> yeah. Great. Also, since we already covered most of the story, and I usually like to talk about music a little bit, opening and ending songs of the show, I really like pretty much all of them. Hate the opening. I didn't care. Uh, yeah, yeah okay. I didn't like the opening that much. All right. I really like it. So. Well, I'm not saying it's anything bad, Dan. I just, I fucking hate the sure, opening. Sure. I skip it every time. <laughs> like, the, the ending's Your pretty good. Love. Shut up, Dan. <laughs> No, what you have to start saying is Dango. Fuck you. <laughs> no, we're not doing this right now. I don't need to get mad for the rest of the podcast. You guys have to deal with me for the next 40 minutes or so. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <sighs> God damn it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, CJ. I had to. It was the perfect opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, any other... um. Because we, we've kind of gone a little bit over what we normally do, talking about the uh, the anime of the week. Which is not a bad thing. I'd rather it be, if we go over any of the parts, it'd be of the actual anime of the week. But uh, right. does anybody else have any other statements or comments, questions, concerns, anything like that? I'm I'd good. like to say that I love how incredibly meta this show is. Oh, yes. that That is pretty great. What do you mean by that? So, it's a manga about making manga... That wants to become an anime. That became an that, anime. That right. became an anime, <laughs> and the story s- revolves about being published in a magazine, which is the magazine that the manga is already being published in. Right. Yep. It's so, it's great. It's All really the funny. Inter loops and yeah. intertwinings. Some something that doesn't happen as often as probably we should happen, but that is also cool when it happens. Is all the nods to like other anime shows and oh, stuff, yeah. like or oh, manga yeah. when they're talking about Dragon Ball at the beginning and that kind of stuff. Well, yeah. a lot of times it's because of. 
copyright issues. Yeah. Right. Oh, That's another true. thing I just remembered that I did love, I forgot to mention before, was um, it may not have happened yet, but it's a, it isn't really a spoiler. It's it's just something that happens a, a couple times. Like some of the, the works that they work on, the manga that they write and everything, every now and then it'll do like it does with the hero at the first episode where it's the first thing you see is like the intro to that. They'll actually go through and do like a quick little segment like that of whatever manga they just submitted or something like that that are really cool and it kind of it doesn't right. animate it but it just it shows you some of the story because they're talking about this manga they've been writing for like two episodes and you actually get to see a little bit of it you get the story and it's cool as shit yeah I really like that as well like have they done that yet I forgot they have they do that with the Chuarf's manga in the beginning I think and they probably okay. do it with money and intelligence at one point as well I don't remember about that one. I don't know. We'll have yeah, to wait and see you next it, week. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, anything else? Nope. That's it. Nope. Cool. So, other anime and manga we've been watching and or reading. Because, yeah. Um, For me, well, hold on. Where is my phone? There it is. Okay. I actually made a list this time because I've actually read a little bit of stuff here and there. I haven't, well, I guess the only anime that I watched was the rest of Bakamon Season 1, which I shouldn't have yet, but whatever. <laughs> um, it's understandable. Yeah. Um, I'm continuing on with uh, doing a little bit of Manaka Box, which I haven't really done much. I've read, like, another chapter, maybe. But that's that's one thing I need to get caught up on, cause, or, or start reading more of, because it's, it's interesting so far. I've been enjoying it so far. And um, also decided to finally... I've downloaded it and actually figured out which chapter essentially I was on, and I'm finally actually getting it caught up on the manga for Attack on Titan. There you go. I need to do that because last time, this is gonna be big spoilers for people, but I don't really give a shit. Like pretty much where I left off on the manga here, this is this is definitely past the anime. So if you don't want to hear anything about this, you should not listen, Clecker. All right, but, gotcha. Um, essentially, where I left off at in the manga is right when you finally find out who the colossal and armored titans are, and then oh, they try yeah. to take away Eren, and they're fighting on the wall there and everything, and that all that stuff's going on. I pretty much stopped right there. So, so around it's chapter actually, forty-two. Yeah, so that I'm, was a I'm, really good scene. Yeah, shit was fucking crazy. It was in the middle of the fight is where I yeah. stopped because I got caught up there. So I need to actually go back and read more of that. So I, I downloaded that and I started. Um, like I pretty much found where I am now, or roughly where I am, and I'll be going with that, and um, I'll be getting caught up on that in the next few weeks, probably, because I'm really interested in what's in the fucking basement, which they're not going to tell you yet, but goddamn it, I want to get closer. Spoilers? Not yet. <laughs> yeah, I fucking know. <laughs> I think that's going to be like one of the last things you yeah, find no out. Yeah, no shit. That's that's the whole reason they have that, to build suspense the entire time until we finally fucking get to the end, and then they're going to tell us. Yeah. Another another thing I've been um, getting caught back up on, because I read it for a while, but I didn't actually get caught up on it, was, um, I forgot the full name of it, but this is like kind of one a smaller name of it, which is uh, Show Mean Sample, which is, um, what happens with this one, it's great, it's it's um, it's just stupid daily life, etchy uh, manga, and what it is, it's this guy gets... He literally gets kidnapped and thrown into this school and everything, which is an all-girls, like, super high-class school. Like, fucking millionaires are uh, the people who are, who, like, fucking, all the daughters are daughters of millionaires and stuff. And the president and everything like that, where they're, they go into a school that's super sheltered and concealed off from, like, the rest of the world. Like, they don't get internet, they don't get anything. Where they, um... They're raised in, like, super high class and everything like that. And they end up grabbing him to bring him in. And uh, I think Show Me Sample is, like, a direct translation to Commoner Sample or something like that. Because they need to actually get, essentially, a little bit of a uh, taste of, like, what the common life is of normal people. So that way are, they're not, uh, they're a little bit desensitized to it. Because some of the girls and everything, when they get done with the school and go out into the real world, they're turned into neats. So they just fucking get on the internet and don't do anything all day and, like, ruin their family's reputation and shit. So. Oh, so that's what a NEAT is. I just learned some culture from this podcast. Well, NEAT, I believe, stands for something like not in education, um, employment, or training. <laughs> yep. Huh. So it's that's literally just somebody, it's it's essentially just a shut-in. It's like the, the typical thing for, like, the 30-year-old in mom's basement, like, that's what a NEAT is. Right, right. Yeah. 
but not to the extreme that they don't leave their house. That's something else. Yeah, yeah, whatever. It's regardless. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. Like there, there's some of the girls and everything go down that lifestyle because when they finally discover what the internet is and like games and everything, that's all they want to do because they they were never exposed to it. They didn't know how to deal with it or do it in moderation, pretty much. So right. He's kind of there just to show them like what normal people's life is and kind of introduce them to a lot of this stuff. And it's very interesting. They think he's gay, which is why he they, they allow him to come to this school for that's all women. <laughs> and if they find out that he's not gay, they're going to cut his dick off. <laughs> some of the like the okay, high I, class people and I stuff. I can see some interesting humor so, coming from that yeah. show. And so a few but times he's just serious. like... Like they're 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 talking to him, be like, "Oh, what you? Oh, oh, so you're you're not gay? You don't like the Macho Man and everything?" When they pull out like a giant piece of sh- scissors, they're like shears or whatever. He's like, "No, I fucking love Macho Man. I want them to rub their bodies all over me." <laughs> and like have to yell this stuff all the time. God damn it, Dan's gonna take that out of fucking context again. Don't do it, Dan. Don't put that at the beginning. All right, <laughs> don't do that. Okay, Ooh, that's late. Uh, uh, God damn it. <laughs> Clacker shoe late also sound as soon as I'm I said that, that I immediately else. regretted that. <laughs> <sighs> no, don't worry about it. I'm, I'm gonna be nice to you, CJ. Well, and fucking, I think it was episode four. The first thing I say is, man, I really want to grab some boobs. So <laughs> that's, <laughs> well, that's, that's better. because you were talking about that, high school DXD. Yeah, and let's that, be honest, I, man, I, you want to grab some boobs. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I'm okay with that. Okay, it's, I, it's a lot better than this one, though, with like Macho Man rubbing against people. <laughs> like, fuck that! Don't do that, Dan. <laughs> all right, all right, I want, I want. I, I, I put like CJ out of context enough times. I think it's time to take somebody else now. And now it's going to be me. Do it. Probably. <laughs> well, well, just, just do people, it. <laughs> the just agent of know. chaos over here. Do it. Yeah. Do it. Good. <laughs> just so people know, Dan tried to pull one out of context when I was talking about, um, I think it was Kimi Wamita no know Boku Joe, where he tried to pull the point where I was talking about how she was, uh, she talked to her dad about how she masturbates about this guy and everything all the time, and I was pretty much saying what she said, and Dan tried to put that at the beginning of one of the episodes, but like, no, <laughs> you're not doing that. Take that out. Oh my god. I mean, I, I have some limits with this. I, I don't need, I don't need to be quoted saying that out on the internet. I, 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 I just think how, like, can you imagine, like, how funny it is if somebody just happens to stumble upon the podcast at one point, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna check out what this is about, and the like it opens up straight like first phrase is you talking about how you masturbate thinking about guys <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's not good for me or for the podcast dan <laughs> right they i mean cj there could be some people into that just saying true true it's, you might get you might get some viewers out of it i don't want those people i don't want those people that's harsh all right anyways so moving on, that's pretty much about all I've been really. Um, I haven't been really watching anything else this week. That's about all I've really been reading. So, uh, Clecker, what have you been doing this week? I've been watching Bakuman. I caught up with every single manga I've been meaning to catch up on. So One Piece, Fairy Tale, Bleach, um, Kingdom, Feng Sheng Ji. Right. And I think I may have said this in the past, but I love how like the what we're watching for Clecker is pretty much the same thing every episode. It's just like really good <laughs> consistency. It's, Keep going. It, it's it's because I don't have much time because I I I don't know. I do stuff outside of work, like work yeah, out that's and fine. do stuff like that. So I'm on the same. Board. I usually have time to read, watch, and I usually don't have much time for anything else. Um. So that's what I've been doing. I've been really excited about One Piece. Um, I'm super excited to see what happens next chapter. Cause are, you, are you ever not excited about One Piece? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are times when I'm not. And it's usually like... I don't know. O- Oda's really good at writing, okay? Like, he's just a spectacular author. Like, Is he better he, than Takagi? <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I can't. That's 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 hard. Um, but he always leaves cliffhangers. He always makes me want more out of the chapters than what I get. So that's why I'm always excited for them. Um, but Gamer is another one I've been reading, and that one's actually picking up. It died down for a bit, just went to him kind of leveling up again. 
and now he's actually in a tough fight with an actual other human being, which is interesting. So it's just random stuff I catched up on. Still haven't started anything for this anime season. I'm probably going to wait till next season. Next season is probably going to be my big, like, anime, like, craziness. I'll probably die down on my manga and then, like, just watch a crap ton of anime next season because I'm really looking forward to a lot of the stuff coming out. Um, but, yeah, that's pretty much what I did this week. I'm assuming you're still waiting on Log Horizon to catch up enough to the end of the season yep. before you watch it. Yeah. Correct. I think I might actually start that soon, because it's up to 22, and by the time I actually get around to finishing up all that, it might be up to the end, but I'm, I'm probably making this mistake of that, and it's probably, I'm probably going to get to, like, up to episode 22 in, like, a day and be like, god damn it, why'd I do this? Yeah, like, CJ, you went through Bakuman in less than a week. I know. Dude, I and went through, Walk like... Horizon, Walk Horizon has more things that would definitely drag you in, I feel like. Like Akatsuki. Like Akatsuki. Right. The first time I watched Bakuman, I did watch, the like, the whole... I, I think I, I started it when the third season was being released, and I watched the first two seasons in, like, a week and caught up to the third season on the next one, and then I just kept going. The third season does the they were being released and that was during final project by the way when we were in college together so the the funny thing about that is that i actually think that's one of the cases where i I actually think bakuman is part of the reason why i got so motivated to work on that project oh it got you super pumped up and shit yeah because like i would watch like five episodes and be like shit man those guys are like going like the whole night like doing their mind i should probably do the same for like (laughs) to make our game or whatever uh, anyway, just one of the, the few cases where, like, <laughs> the, like, anime tied with, like, my life in interesting ways. Oh, that's great, man. Alright, so Roberto, what have you been watching or reading? Uh, nothing new, but I have been re-watching Air Gear, mainly to make a friend watch it from work who hadn't seen it. Nice. What is that about? Clecker was talking a little bit about So, that. Air Gear, it's kind of about power inline skatings, essentially. And when I first got into the anime, I thought it was going to be like very high level competition style thing, you know, kind of generic, but actually it ended up being this kind of underground secret racing thing, kind of like Jet Set Radio, except with like superpowers and stuff. And it's really interesting. Sounds pretty crazy. The main character is extremely pervy. And it's hilarious at times. Nice. I think too that's a requirement them. for you guys to, to like an anime, right? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> no just joking. I like it, Bakuman. He's not a fucking pervert. Right? Uh, that's right. It's probably the opposite, actually. <laughs> yeah. Oh that's my true. god, I that actually just, <laughs> that just reminded me of something I got in this week that I forgot to tell you guys about. Um, even though it's fucking expensive, I've been starting to collect some of the Figmas for Bakuman Guitar. And I got the rarest one, I believe, because it's one that was like, I think it came out first, and they never did another run of it, which was the, uh, or if they did do another run, it was still early on, too. And I finally got my hands on for, like, only about, I think it was 70 bucks. I finally got the Hachikuji uh, Figma. Hachikuji! So I got that now. I like Hachikuji. Awesome. She's a great character, yeah. I wasn't a big fan of her last arc. But I think her first arc was probably my favorite part of the original series. Yeah. But let's be fair. A lot of people liked it a lot because there was, like, Senju Hata there. And yeah, yeah. Senju Hata. How do you, dude, stop <laughs> fucking mis- mispronouncing your name. It's making me mad. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm not saying I necessarily really liked it because of her. Just, like, that was the point where, I like, the interactions really got me in the series. And I, I just started thinking about, like where you would you could be going and that kind of stuff but enough about game got that for this episode probably <laughs> yeah it, it I, I may be watching it again by the way because <laughs> i got the, the figure made me want to watch it again cool you should get a shinobu figure in i did get my space dandy this week i still need to watch more space dandy i've seen like two episodes oh it's fantastic i it still love a... the fucking beginning though it's, like it's so it, good it has one of the best openings like i've seen in a while it's it's very jazzy and fits fits the mood of the show pretty well. What? I just love the narrator too. He's like Space Dandy. He's a dandy guy, guy in, in space. space. <laughs> it's like yes. <laughs> Combs the galaxy like his pompadour. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, so good. Anyway, Dan, what have you been watching or reading this week? Yeah, not much as well, actually. I, I keep, like, very slowly gro- going through Amagami SS Plus, so I watch two more arcs this time, which makes it four episodes. I would say the second R- Ryoko arc made me like that character and, like, that part of the story a lot more. Uh, but anyway, the next one that I'm going to have to watch now is Sai, so that's why I'm not that excited for it. <laughs> that's why I stopped you. watching that Yeah, much. that's why I stopped, yeah. And I'll get, I'll uh, go through it eventually. I've been watching a lot of, like, just TV shows, actually. I started getting a little more into Netflix. I'm watching the third season of House of Cards, which is amazing, in my opinion. And I also started watching Orange is the New Black, which is good. You know what you should watch is... The, I think it's the BBC version of Sherlock. Oh, I did watch that. I love that. Oh, yeah. so good. That's really good. I can't wait for them to go back to it, dude. Like, it's been stopped oh, yeah. for a while at this point. No, I really like that as well. Sherlock is really good. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's about cool. it. <laughs> All right. Um, so I guess that's pretty much what we've been watching. So moving on to the random topic of the day. So what anime world... Would you guys like to live in if you could? Let's start with fuck it, Roberto this time. Why not? All right. Well, this should be pretty obvious. Now, you may consider it one or not, but Pokemon. Pokemon. Yes, it is <laughs> technically an anime. I, sure. I don't. I don't know if I'd want to live in a world where I can just go outside and then have some fucking fire dragon thing just be there (laughs) and potentially kill me if it decides to go crazy. Well, the reasoning behind it is because if you think a lot of of the other stories, if you just jump in, you're not the main character. Whereas in Pokemon, who's the main character? You. And even if you're not, you still have the potential to surpass anyone in that world, you know? Yeah. Right. Because you can catch Pokemon. And even if you don't want to be, like, a super Pokemon badass, you get to live with Pokemon. Come on. (laughs) It could be really cool, yeah. I just... I I guess I'm afraid of a lot of things like that that could cause a lot of pain to me. (laughs) Right. I mean, mean, no one ever really gets hurt. I I do... I have to say I do want a Finnegan. I would love to have a (laughs) Finnegan. That's the little fox, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's cute. I would love to have one of those just to cuddle with it. It's so good. (laughs) I already know what you give, like, CJ for for his next birthday. Like a Finicky plush plush uh, doll or something. Oh, I saw one of those at, uh, I think it was a Megacon. Or, yeah, it was Megacon last year. I saw, like, Finicky plushies. I was like, I want one of those so bad. <laughs> like, I saw somebody carried one around. It was, like, a, it was a good size one, too. So it was actually almost, like, life-size or whatever. It's fucking great. I mean, right. So what, how, how cool would it be to live? In a Pokemon world, that does sound pretty awesome. Like I, I do right. know that when when I was a kid, like I was, I thought about that all the time. Eventually, I kind of like, eventually, I kind of forgot about Pokemon for the most part. I know Roberto is a big fan of the series, or like, maybe not as much as the anime series, just like the the world and the games and everything. Do you still follow the series, by the way, Roberto? Not the show so much. I want to go back and watch a lot of the seasons I missed. Right. Yeah, I watched the first like. Three, I think, and then at one point, yeah. I'm like, okay, I got like after of this. Johto, I didn't really right. watch it anymore. I've got enough of seeing like the same episode over and over again, because <laughs> that's what Pokemon kind of is. Like every, like yeah. there's a bit of a like a flow that every episode follows. You can definitely feel Pokemon was one of the shows designed to sell games and like right, right, merchandise. Yeah. yeah, but the other reason is if you think about it, as soon as you're ten years old, you're pretty much a badass. You get to go out in the world, right. travel beat people up and take their money <laughs> and just essentially be a badass which is unbelievable because like i remember that when i watched pokemon i was probably like 10 years old or something maybe i, I think younger than that i don't know and i like i saw that and like looking at that guy being 10 years old i didn't relate to like i mean i never realized that he was just like a very small kid you know, like, to me, it was like, oh, man, that's a, he's, like, an awesome hero and adventure and everything, and I like to be that guy and that kind of stuff. But now that I'm I'm 20, I, I, I look at that and I'm like, shit, like, my little cousin is 10 years old, and he doesn't know shit about life. You know, like, how, like, how <laughs> could someone like that go into the world, like, looking for adventures and stuff? It's crazy. I have to say, if I was in that world, I would probably be... I would at least try to be one of the leaders, but I'd probably be part of, like, Team Rocket or some shit. <laughs> I'd probably be an asshole. Oh, God, yeah. Fuck it, why not? <laughs> I mean, you do it's know not like that, you like, would go to jail or anything. 
<laughs> yeah, that's right. They they just keep coming back and coming back. I, I would try to be one of the super high up people. <laughs> just be into like the fucking mafia lord of the fucking team rocket shit or something. <laughs> oh god. Then I'd just be like, you bring me fucking twenty Finnegans. <laughs> I'm gonna be surrounded by cuteness. <laughs> yeah, the same way that like Team Rocket is always going after Pikachu on the show for no reason, pretty much. CJ would always be looking for the Finnegan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like every single episode is like elaborating this crazy plan so that he can get one Finnegan. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Uh Good choice, good choice. Yeah, that's pretty good. That that it would probably be an interesting an interesting world to live in. Well, it would be because it's you have just fucking tons of creatures that have all these elemental powers that fuck shit up. So yeah, I would want to ride an Onyx too. <laughs> right, there's so much to do in that world. There actually is a lot to do in that world of just things. Yeah, just like mini games all over the place. <laughs> cool. So um, Clicker, what's your world? Well, it'll be hard to top Pokemon, but. My world was very simple. It was pretty much I'd like to live in the world of Sword Art if I could. Main reason Whoa, I'd like to son live of a bitch. in Sword Art. <laughs> hey, CJ, I'm sorry. Say- I'm sorry, CJ, but you're the one that asked me first. Yeah. So you guys are crazy. I I'll, I'll I will never choose that. I uh, so, so many people are fucking dying. So the risk of dying. Yeah, that's that's that sucks, but that would kind of just push me harder to not die and train like on my own and be actually clever. find new heights. What? To clarify, do you mean this the sword art online the game or their world in general even outside of the game? Well, I'd say their world in general even outside of the game. Okay. Um, that, like, that, fuck it, again. <laughs> well, yeah, pretty much, because I, I was hoping he'd be talking about just inside the game, because mine is just their world in general, where the, the subset inside the game is cool, too, but just... Yeah, the, yeah. Fact, the fact that you could literally put on this helmet and just be instantly into a different world, and the fact that you could literally explore this world, like, that's a huge step into gaming that I would love. Oh, yeah. I would love to do. Like, I would love to just put on a headset... Close my eyes and just jump into this new world and just yeah. like run around, do all this crazy shit. Like it to me, it would I would be able to do stuff I wouldn't be able to do normally, and that would feel like I feel like that's a goal of a game. It's to kind of get it's your to escape mind off. reality. Yeah, it's to escape reality, which is why Sword Art is the perfect thing because yep. it escapes reality. So that would be mine. Right, I'll, the, I'll, I'll give you that, like, the idea of having, actually, like, that April, like, the, the, the Nerf Gear at first, but then it becomes something else, I can't remember the other name now, but just being able to get into a game in that way, I think that is amazing, and I hope we get to, like, a similar a similar point one day with uh, the gaming industry and, and everything, but just everything that's fucked up that happens in the world, in the sense that they die in the first game, and then Death Gun shows up on GGO, and all that kind of stuff, I would like to stay away from that. Well, yeah, like, that's definitely not something why I'd want to be in the world is, like, right, right. the risk of dying from playing a game. No, it's because of, like, all the cool shit that they can do, and, like, they have all this technology and everything, and one reason why I kind of, for mine, I was going to pick the, the world of Sword Art Online, just the actual world outside of the games and everything, too, is because it's also the same world of Excel World. It's just set a certain amount of time in, in, the, in the future from Excel World, or, no, in the past, past. Excel World. Because Excel World is essentially like the evolution of all that stuff and everything put together, so it's kind of a combination of both of those animes because they are they're, they're they're the same world. It's just different time frames of it where they um like I love the technology that they have in in Sword Art with like all the different game stuff and everything they can do, and they just expanded on that in um in Excel World where they can right. do all the gaming stuff like that, but they can also have all this augmented reality stuff just there to the point where. The, the fucking things they wear around their necks even go to the point of fi- like correcting vision for like glasses and stuff. People don't even need glasses anymore because it corrects so much for you. Like, it's fucking incredible. Would you say that is a series worth watching, by the way, Excel World? Because I've heard mixed things about it. And I watched the first episode. It was good, but I didn't, it wasn't enough to like get me hooked into like keep watching it and stuff. I yeah. definitely enjoyed it, but it is very mixed, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. a hit or miss. Uh, a lot of people find that the main character's too whiny for them. Fucking like, Hadayuki. Yeah. yeah. 
they least. find that he's too whiny and too like not confident enough in himself. Right. Is him the chubby kid? Right. Yep. I think. Yep. It, yeah. See, something that really annoyed me in the first episode, although it's kind of like stupid, is that like he was kind of a loser in his real life, at least in the beginning, which is okay. But I thought that when he got into the game, he would be the fucking badass, and he kind of was, but at the same time, he was a pig. And I, I couldn't, like, see why, like, I don't know. It was just, like, very weird, in my opinion. Like, the moment he got into the game, I was expecting something completely different than what it actually was. Yeah. This is hilarious, though, him fucking going into the, I think it's, like, the racquetball thing or whatever, and just wrecking everything. Right, right. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I would suggest probably to watch it. I'd, I'd give it a few more episodes and see if you want to commit to it or not first. Right, right. But, um, yeah, like... Just going back to the the topic of the world, though, it's just so cool because like that stuff shows how how far stuff like that was in, ingrained into them. Where they even have some class stuff in the virtual worlds like that and everything, and it's just like I don't know. Like I, I would be fine living in either of the eras where it was like the Sword Art Online or the Excel world. Like either of those are just like the worlds are super cool and they have super cool technology. Because I mean that's why I'd want to be there. I love awesome technology like that, like virtual and augmented reality stuff. Right. Yeah. I can see that, yeah. Sounds like a good a good point. Mm-hmm. Cool, so that was both me and Klecker together. So, Dan, <laughs> what would be the world you'd like to live in? I'll choose Yudi Yudi because everyone is a middle school girl, and I'll be the only boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, you my call God. me a fucking pervert sometimes, Dan, really? <laughs> no, I'm joking. I don't want anybody to think that I'm a pedophile Too or late. okay? Too late. <laughs> it has been they said, it has do. been recorded. Okay. We all have copies of this recording. For real, though, it is kind of a tough decision for me. I don't know, because most worlds, like, most anime worlds, like, they have, like, good things, and then they also have, like, a few bad things and that kind of stuff. Which one has the best things? With with a bit of an an expected answer, probably, but a show that I like a lot, which is Duranata. Like, the second season is being released now. Just because, like, although, like, on the surface... It's almost like a normal, realistic world, and, like, people kind of live, like, normal lives and have their friends and whatever, but at the same time, there's, like, there's a fucking, like, headless motorcycle rider that is going through the town, and just a second, my brother came here to, like, annoy me for no fucking reason. Please get out Damn of here. Damn it, Dan. Sério, você tá ferrando com o podcast. Speak okay. English, Dan. Blah, blah, blah. Right, right. That. Should I cut that in editing? I don't know. No, leave it in. It's anyway. Fun. Like <laughs> somebody will be like somebody will yell at you or your brother or something. It's great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I love like, he actually was like opening the door in super like slow motion. He took like thirty seconds <laughs> to open the door, and and then he eventually just like put his face in, and he was laughing. It was like the super you. creeping on you, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I couldn't concentrate when oh, she's speaking. But anyway, like I, I just think like. There's a lot of, like, cool things that happen on that world in different fronts. And almost everybody in that world has a secret and, like, like almost like a secret life or something like that. And I would just like to be there, like, interact with all those different characters and, and try to, like, build, like, my own things as well in there. You know, like, my own group, like, do my, like, my own gang or whatever. And as I said, like, in a way, it's almost like, in the surface, it's almost like real life. But then there's all those crazy shit that happens in the background that I think is really cool, like fucking headless motorcycle rider or like the other chick who is uh like has a magical katana or whatever anyway i if not that then i'll probably go with full metal alchemist but i still just think durarada would be pretty interesting i would say full metal alchemist would be a much more interesting world to be in than than uh da-da-da-da. I can't yeah. ever say that fucking name right, goddamn. Right. I mean, I can see most people saying that. As I say, like, it's probably a very unexpected answer, but just because, like, I love that show so much, and I watched it multiple times, and I'm just like, man, like, I love all those things that are happening, and I love all those characters. I would just, like, l- like to be part of that story in a way, I guess. I but, am- yeah, in general, I think, yeah, Full Metal Alchemist has a more interesting world just because, like, the alchemy powers and all that dude fucking alchemy and auto mail those two things make that world fucking amazing <laughs> <laughs> yeah they do i'm surprised dan didn't choose code geass as his world but yeah i don't know just wasn't feeling like it all right then so i want to point out that we all kind of technically picked japan as a, where we want to live right <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's because japan's awesome they have arcades roberto arcades i know what American state has an arcade? There, There's an arcade where I used to live. 
Well, CJ. That's well, not good. super <laughs> advanced arcades. Not movie. super advanced. You can't literally go into a battle pod and then fly around as if you were piloting a Gundam, can you? Semi, kind of. They have some of the some stuff like that. Is it a rail I, shooter? I don't remember. I haven't been in a while, but they do have some of the ones that have full motion platforms and everything. Hmm, okay. They have they have go karts in the back too, which one of the tracks are amazing because they have it like waxed or something so certain parts of it are just slippery as fuck so you can yeah. you can drift like hell it's so good yeah i i went on a go-kart track recently that mid mid race i was just mid race and i was traveling and they just greased it so i was making a turn and it was just like whoa and i was spinning <laughs> it was it was funny nice i guess the reason why i didn't choose code years is because like there's a lot of crazy shit going into the world that makes a lot of people die and they'll probably be, like, scared of, of being there. But uh, 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 part of the reason why I, I, I went to do that a little bit is because I was just thinking about, like, how there are all those crazy characters doing those crazy things, but none of them dies. You know, like, they fight, but never really, like, happens. But... Hmm. It's a all stupid right. reason, but anyway. Cool. So... Anyway, I think we're pretty much at a good point to wrap up here. Anybody have any other comments concerns or anything like that before we wrap it up anything they want to throw out there um, i think i'm fine nope okay cool anyway let's go ahead and um yeah so uh what we're gonna be talking about next week um we're gonna be doing bakuman 13 through 25 i think as 25 yep something like that and yep. um yeah we're gonna be talking about that for for probably at least a half hour in the next uh podcast and everything um we have no idea what our random topic's going to be next week, so, yeah, we'll figure that out later. And, uh... <laughs> sure. And, uh, yeah, you can find everybody, or you can find everybody out here. We, um... You can find me, the host, at uh, Boom Coffee on pretty much everything, like Twitter, Steam, like anything like that. I'm just Boom Coffee on there, my anime list. Um, you can find the fucking podcast somewhere on Twitter. I think it's Pseudo Random Pod. No. Pseudo underscore pod. Uh, it's just pseudo, pseudo underscore pod. Yeah, yeah. That's where you can find the um, the the Twitter for the podcast. Here we have uh, pseudo random podcast dot wordpress dot com, as well as you can search for us on iTunes. We're on there as well. Um, and yeah, it's and sp spoilers. We might be on. Actually, should I say this? No, probably not. Forget about it. We might be on other places oh. soon, Ooh. or not. Oh, but we'll see. Little little teaser there. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Dad, we're the we're right, gonna So if you want to know the answer to the meaning of life, you can just follow me on Twitter at Lima Daniel M. And that's about it. You'll see all my other stuff in there eventually. So. Okay. And Roberto. RJR two nine nine two. Also, Roberto, make sure like you say like the last shoe of your name like really loud because usually you kinda of do this thing where it's like RJR two nine nine two and like okay. When I when I'm editing the podcast, it's it happened I think twice already that like the last two kind of got cut when I was taking out the noise, but yeah, just making sure. So yeah, there there is a second two on there, which yeah. is what they're trying <laughs> to say. Okay, so clicker. All right, if you want to know the best phrases for any situation, take a look at <laughs> O Clecker on Twitter O H K L E K E R at Twitter. Um, or you can just find me in general by looking up Boclex, B-O-W-K-L-E-K-S, and you will probably right. find me on Steam and other places like that. All right. Cool. So, um, yeah, thanks, everybody. Um, hopefully you'll, you'll tune in next week for the Bakuman 13 through 25 and whatever fucking random topic we pick for the day. So thanks a lot. Bye. 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 Ciao. Adios. <laughs>